creating 42 original Pikmin enemies, all based on comments and suggestions from viewers. For our first enemy, we have the Man of Action. This silver warhead looking spider drops down and that's it. Your squad gets wiped and game over. All right, relax, relax. This enemy skitters around a spider web high above the ground. It drops down attempting to grab your Pikmin in a web. During this attack, you can break the thread it's hanging on, causing it to fall to the ground where you can wail on it. Eventually, it will jump back up to its higher suspended spider web though. Its other attack is a little bit more dangerous. It will jump up from the web, kind of like a trampoline, and then as it falls down, you hear a whistle sound. And upon impact, it explodes, of course. This large explosion leaves the enemy vulnerable for a long period of time afterwards though, so this is your best chance to deal damage to it. Our second enemy had a few people submit it. It is a three-headed greater Snagrit. This is the ultimate Snagrit, with its three heads, Goliath, Titan, and Mo. It should go without saying, but this enemy is the pileated Snagrit only worse. With three heads being able to eat your Pikmin, if that wasn't enough, it also flies around, making it the quickest of all the Snagrits. And to top it all off, this feathered fellow is able to command a small amount of winged Snagrits. Just imagine a downy Snagrit with no legs and some wings. As for fighting this thing, well, you just throw Pikmin at it until it dies. A less scary enemy design is up next, and that is the Mammoth Snootwhacker. The name pretty much says it all. You take the Snootwhacker, you make him blue, and then this fellow is a little bit more aggressive than his green counterpart. It's got a bit more HP as well, but it's also a bit slower to help balance it out. This next entry was very unique. It's not so much an enemy, more as a hazard. It's a rock. Yeah. A big rock that falls from the sky and crushes your pick. The difference here is that the rock actually stays on the ground after falling, and in it are a bunch of Ujidani, meaning after dodging the rock, you can stock up on nectar. This thing's a random encounter, so it can happen anywhere in a cave where rocks fall. Two bull boar variants are up next. We have the moldy bull bear. There's not too much to say about this. It's just a bull bear, but mold edition. Use white Pikmin to fight it. Hopefully white Pikmin get a buff with one times damage instead of 0.5, because this thing has a fair amount of HP. And the other bull bear variant is the icy bull bear. I know we already have a frosty bull boar, but the person that submitted this was a subscriber for nine months. That's an OG right there back in my original Pikmin video. So make sure you subscribe. Anyways, this fellow is just a stronger version as it drops icicles and it shoots small snowballs every now and then. The artillery beetle is our next enemy design. This variant shoots slowly but lobs rocks at players. Because of this, this thing is annoying to deal with. So you're going to want to rush it as quickly as you can. The one difference about attacking this enemy is that its underbelly is also weak and exposed at all times meaning that you can either open up the back to deal damage and attack it right away, or you can just attack the underbelly. Our next enemy is a long legs, or short legs, I should say. It's mossy short legs. This is essentially one of the spider enemies in Pikmin, but not a boss. It's a common enemy, kind of like a bull borb, and you can attack it with any Pikmin type easily due to it being short. Still got the crush mechanic though. Another mini fellow is up next, and that is the lesser clops. Another one of those simpler designs submitted during simpler times. It's a baby quaggled Myoclops that has a pellet posy inside the crystal. It's decently large, maybe around the size of a long legs, and with its smaller size comes a smaller amount of HP compared to the original, of course. Here we have three drawing submissions, all from one person. First up is the Bioluminescent Bulblax. This buddy shines bright, literally. Its mechanics are that it's in a cave with highly reflective objects, like mirrors, and it sends out beams of light. These can bounce off the mirrors, or if they happen to hit you directly, they can end up blinding you or your Pikmin, causing Danduri issues. It's got a fair amount of HP, and it will also charge at you as well, just to make it slightly different than your standard bullboard. Second up is the Doughbug, and this is the first breadbug variant of the video. Now this guy carries items a little bit differently than the average one, because he falls over onto the object, and then reorients himself upright and rolls away. Pikmin caught in its path will get crushed, so be careful. To get the object out of the Doughbug, just throw Pikmin at it until it falls out. Once the object falls out, this will deal damage, potentially killing the Doughbug depending on the weight of the object. And the third enemy submission from the same person is the Frosted Behemoth. This weird bug mutation lives in the coldest of caves. So cold that the floors are icy and slippery. It attacks using its giant icicle feet, 
and these create holes in the ice, leaving the water underneath exposed. Baiting the behemoth to attack in this exposed water will cause the ice to refreeze, and it will get its icicle spear stuck inside, where you can freely attack the creature. As for its other attacks, it has Frost Breath, which will freeze any non-ice Pikmin that aren't riding Ochi. Not much else to say about this boss, it's just a cool kind of frigid mechanic type of boss. Moving on to another ice-related enemy, we have a simpler one, and that's the Ice Jelly Crush Blood. All this thing really has going for him is a slight difference in mechanic. It tries to squish Pikmin like the regular Crush Blood, but since it's made out of jelly, since that's not really hard, it just knocks the Pikmin away. However, to beat this guy, you have to freeze the jelly, and when you freeze the jelly, now it's able to crush. So while you're making progress to defeating it, you're also making it more deadly. The Scoop Goop. This is another one of those object type enemies, only it's passive. All it does is go around the map scooping up your Pikmin in its goop, hence the name. The Pikmin don't die, it's just a hazard that forces the player to be a bit more cautious. To defeat it, you can just throw Pikmin at it, and a few might get stuck during the process, but just whistle them back. There's no real hazard when fighting this thing. Another set of three drawing submissions, all from one person. We have a musical enemy, the Accordion Beetle. Unlike the regular version, this one is a little bit more aggressive, and when it lands, it will create music stomps that knock over any close-by Pikmin. It also has a disorienting attack where it uses its antennas, or accordion antennas, I don't really know what to call them, to make any nearby Pikmin go crazy. A similar concept to the original, just with slight changes. Now we have the Atomic Wraith, which looks like the inside of an atom, and it uses its electron-like orbs to protect and attack. It will fling these electrons at you, shocking anything not immune to electricity. Damaging its protective dome will reveal its weak body. Or you can wait until it flings enough electrons at you, in which case the shield will go down on its own. Then you can attack the weak body. A fiery jittery bug is the next idea. And this enemy is similar to the Dweevils, but with a little bit more HP and only two legs. The biggest difference though is that they pick up Pikmin rather than treasures, and they carry them on their head. It should go without saying, but this is pretty bad for any non-fireproof Pikmin. A few more elemental enemies, we have the Zappy Wally Hop. This is the quickest jumper in the frog family, and when they land they create a small shockwave. For this you can just think of the Chili Hop's elemental ice puddle, but electricity instead. And then we also have the Fiery Wally Hop which is essentially the same enemy, but with fire. It also doesn't hop as fast as the zappy one. Also, when I was looking back, I noticed that I should have made the color scheme match the fiery young yellow Wally Hop from Hey Pikmin, but a bit too late for that now, I guess. Shelled Long Legs is another Long Legs, and I know, I know, we have a lot of these. I guess I'm a little bit biased to the Long Leg family given that I accepted so many of these designs. Anyways, this guy has a hard shell covering its soft legs. The shell is more kind of crab-like in design, similar to the Titan Weevil, kind of design-wise. You gotta break the hard shell and you can attack it pretty much anywhere. The leg, the leg, the other leg, the main body, or the last leg. And once the shell is broken, you can damage anywhere where the shell was broken. Another defensive type of enemy, and we have the Shielded Bloister. Like the regular one, but with added armor. Use purple or rock Pikmin to damage this enemy more quickly. Not too much else to say, it's just a slower bloister with more HP. Continuing on, we have another shell type or roundish type enemy, the Abysmal Claw Seeker. These fellows are found deep within caves and are completely blind. Oh. They listen for anything making a lot of noise. Then they dig into the ground and attempt to attack the target. They rely on stealth since they have very, very little HP. And for our second last long legs, we have Bony Longleg, the thing of nightmare. This enemy lives in a boneyard filled with all of its fallen victims. Like the regular long legs, it has a standard crush mechanic, but its biggest difference is that in order to take it down, you need to break its legs in order to damage the main body, since it's way too high up for any Pikmin type to reach. Bony here isn't helpless though once you break its legs and it falls onto the ground. Though. It will swing its broken appendages at you cutting any Pikmin in its path. And its path is heading towards a bunch of bone piles that are nearby, where it will go to them and repair its broken legs. You can either exhaust all the bone mounds to keep it grounded, or you can damage the main body enough to defeat it before it's able to repair itself. A crusader is up next, the bludgeoning Jousmite. A larger member of the Jousmite family, it has a unique visor gimmick. Normally the visor is on its back, covering the weak abdomen. However, when this enemy attacks, smashing its mace-like weapon into the ground, trying to crush any Pikmin in front of it, 
it will temporarily get stuck. At this point, use some Pikmin to pull the visor covering its back. This will cause the Joust Mite to quickly retract it onto its face, stunning it and allowing you to deal damage to the weak abdomen. The Sequatic Pick Snatcher lurking in the watery areas of PNF 404. This enemy attempts to snatch any Pikmin near water and drag them under. It will also grab any floating ice Pikmin or even wing Pikmin that are currently flying above water. Once snatched, the Pikmin begin to drown and you have to take this creature down quickly in order to prevent Pikmin loss. The Giant Antenna Beetle, similar to its regular version but bigger. This is immune to damage kind of like the Armored Cannon Beetle. In order to deal damage, let it control a Pikmin or two, and once this happens, it will start revealing its weak spot along its back. And obviously, you can deal damage to it at this point. A few drawing submissions are up next. First is the Pinching Crabsy. This fellow is like a creeping chrysanthemum mixed with an aristocrat. It hides in the ground waiting for Pikmin to come close, and then emerges, chopping any unfortunate Pikmin. Defeat it like you would the regular enemies. We also have the adult Rocky Burrownit, a massive creature similar to the Grubchucker but way more aggressive. It uses its scythe-like arms to slice up opponents. It can also use its mandibles to pick up and eat Pikmin. Thankfully though, its underbelly is its weak spot. So dealing damage to it isn't too bad, until it retreats into the ground. When this happens, rush it with Ochi or Rock Pikmin to flip it over, stunning it and allowing you to deal damage to it again. The Spindly Rumpup is another member of the Rumpup family, only more on the arachnid side. Which I guess scorpions are arachnids? Whatever. This fellow stays on a spiderweb, shooting these web balls at you that will get anything hit by it temporarily stuck. Defeating it is the same as normal where you have to weigh down the tail. Movement is greatly reduced though due to the sticky web surface the fight takes place on. A little bit of a different thing up here, but last time, or the second last time on the Invisoron show, I was told I reinvented Dwebble. And upon looking at it, I kind of agree. That wasn't my intention, so I remade two enemy variants. The first is the Sanded Hermit, that now has a sand castle with coral on its back, along with a different design. Still with the original mechanic of hiding and waiting for Pikmin to come close. And then we have the Hermit Terracrab, and this leans more into a Hermit Crab design. Again, they're still the same species, with the same mechanics, it's just that they're adapted slightly different to the environment. They also have the added mechanic of throwing dirt or sandballs from afar during combat. And next up we have an amazing elongated bread bug or baguette bug. This is the only submission I got where I received a full time lapse. This variant eats Pikmin like the crumb bug. It does so by dragging the Pikmin into its lair which is a bunch of interconnected tunnels that it uses to travel around the map. But this is also a bread book, so we'll attempt to steal any items, and this is your time to win against it in a tug of war, and obviously deal damage when it gets absorbed by the ship. This isn't the only bread bug variant though. I mentioned I got a bunch of people asking for a baguette bug or a bigger bread bug enemy. Too many to list, but I will show the three drawing submissions I got for this giant, giant bread bug. The name of the one that I drew is the loaf bug. It's basically just a stronger giant bread bug. Not much to explain here. It's got the strength of 50 Pikmin and it's passive similar to regular bread bugs. It does have the added call help mechanic. This is similar to Crumbug Danduri I also mentioned in a previous video where multiple bread bugs can pull on the same item. And our final long legs. I know we've got a lot of these, but this one's fire, trust me. We have the Molten Longlegs, a fire version of the Legboy family. This guy leaves fire puddles wherever it steps, and lava will occasionally drip down from the main body. If you haven't guessed it yet, use Red Pigment. We also have the Google-Eyed Mimic, and this enemy also has a really nice drawing submission. As for mechanics, it's kind of like the Pearly Clam Clam. Well, it's exactly like it, only it moves around the map with a valuable object inside. It doesn't have any arms, so it's not going to pick up and steal anything from you, but you will have to defeat it in order to collect the treasure it has. The Pickberry Cover is an enemy like the Creeping Chrysanthemum, but smaller and weaker, and with a drawing submission. Just like its relative, it hides in the ground waiting for prey. However, this one pretends to be a Pikmin, so its prey is the captain. And when you go and try and pluck it, it emerges, dealing a bit of damage to you. To avoid this, you can simply whistle at it to force it to come out of the ground, and then you can take it down. Now we're down to our final few submissions. Here we have a submission from a fellow Pikmin content creator, Wigwam Man. And for his submission, he submitted the awesome Clockwork Dirigi Bug. Expanding on the regular version, this enemy throws proximity mines 
and sometimes even tracker mines. I didn't end up making my own drawing for this one as it already fits with my style really, really well. For our final text entry, we have the festive enemy, even though it's no longer Christmas, or snowing really, at least where I live. It is the Icy Myrclops, which is basically the Quaggled Myrclops, but with a Christmas skin on. Not much to say about this, I just wanted to include it because I really like environmental variants of existing enemies, kind of like how Shaggy has the regular and snow version. The Prancing Lullaby, a nice drawing submission for this one. This is a mix of a flower and a bee and it remains hiding until a Pikmin comes close. When in range, it hypnotizes the Pikmin, similar to Groovy Gas. The gas doesn't go away until this bee is finally defeated. My design is fairly different from the original. I just leaned more into the bee part of the name in the design, because Pikmin type enemies have a huge advantage in the tournament, so I excluded most of them. Regardless though, I still have wanted to have this one because it's a cool hypnotizing enemy. I just changed the design a bit. Our next enemy is also of the bee variety, and it's called the Ground Piercer, due to its drilling type of attack. This enemy uses its drill-like body to stab at your Pikmin. If it misses, this will cause the enemy to get stuck where you're able to deal damage to it. The final two enemy submissions have come from the exact same person. The first being the Fiery Crush Blat, a fired up version of the Calcified Crush Blat. This enemy has the added risk of fire, but it also doesn't have any armor to protect it. When it ignites itself, reds are your best bet to battle it. But if the fire is out, which happens on occasion, any type can take it down. And our final enemy is a more peaceful friend rather than an enemy, and it's a multicolored spectral. I personally love these little butterflies, so I just had to end off with a beautiful environment drawing for this one. The multicolored spectralid is the rarest of its species, and like all of the others, it poses no threat to you or your pigment. I wanted to add an incentive to keeping it alive, so this fellow actually causes plants nearby to grow quicker, be it pellet posies or unplucked pigment. And there you go. 42 enemies in one video. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment your favorite.